my heart was 300 beats per minute and they had to stop it and then yeah, revive it's, me it's after. It baffles my mind every time to think that they can just stop and go <laughs> but, one. But dude, when you, okay, back again. When you go from 300 beats per minute to fucking zero, it feels like you're being hit by a fucking train. You go, <laughs> it's just fucking nuts. You literally, I made that noise. What gets me is that. Yeah, what gets me is that when you do that part. You love the noise. <laughs> it's fucking yeah, I can harsh. imagine. You know, I can just see you on the bed just like. <laughs> it's just, intense. Like, I, I feel like I miss a breath. Like once I'm like. <gasps> Oh my god, I feel like I'm dying. Mm -hmm. So but imagine yeah, no, your heart just, at 300 beats per minute, and then it goes to fucking nothing. Yeah, it just stops. It just goes, yeah. Poof. You no, know, yeah, it's it, like, it, you know in the movie I Am Legend when the zombies are screaming on the table? Oh, and they're, yeah. like, and they're like dying. He's like, oh, this is the noise I fucking make. <laughs> yeah. was, and they're like, is he okay? Oh, he's just making the noise. <laughs> every, the noise every person makes when we do this. Yeah, the doctor is like, does he make this? Has he made this noise before? Like, oh, every time he dies, he makes this noise. It's okay. My mom's like, yeah, oh, it's okay. He always makes this noise. Well, I'm just trying to picture even the doctors. Uh, I Buffalo scared Bills. one of them. I scared oh, the ER doctor. I swear okay. to God. I, I, he's like, I'd oh. be scared too. Hey, how you doing, everyone? My name is Michael the Chairman, and this is Ryan Radio, and welcome back to the Walk and Roll Podcast. Well, Ryan, we uh, didn't have any Christmas episodes, but we are now no, we didn't. in the new year. Do you have any New Year's resolutions? Well, I was going to say, does it feel like a new year? I feel like instead, like, when no. you say a new year, I expect like it's a new video game. You get like, oh, it's a new video game. It's new. But it's just the DLC of the same game you get every year. It just feels <laughs> like it's an add-on to the year you just had. You know what I'm saying? Once so you hit it, a certain age, it's it, like, is, it is like it a just, DLC. It, it feels like a continuation of the same year you just lived. Like, oh, yeah. Like, what a shitty year I had. Well, no, it's going to be a shitty year this year, too, because it's going to continue <laughs> on. It's just the interconnection. Like, what a great not, attitude. What like, a <laughs> God, God is not going to sit there and go, huh, I've been shitting on you for a year. Oh, it's the 1st of January. Time to switch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's not going to be like, okay. Well, yeah. After just 2020, I've, I've seen so many memes about, like, you know, the, like the guy uh, blinking meme when he's surprised? You know that meme? Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. like they show 2020 and then you blink and you blink again and it's like 2023. It just yeah. all like 2020 to 2023 just completely melded together. A hundred percent. Yeah, that's probably why. I, yeah, that's probably what I get what I'm saying. Like, I mean, I, I love some of the new year, especially with friends and family. So it's like, oh, hey, guys, you know, like I said, we made it. You know, we, we went, we're all healthy. We made it. You know, we're safe. We technically we're all did survive a yeah. worldwide yeah. pandemic. Like we did. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah, so it is awesome to say, like, yeah, what a year we had. Like, it's almost, I, I wouldn't say, like, the New Year's Eve party is essentially, like, partying for the New Year. It's essentially partying to remember the year you had. That's, that's why, what's the way I look at it? You know what I'm saying? Kind of like, like a celebration go, of life. Yeah, Instead of, like, funerals, yeah. there's a celebration of lives, you know? It's a celebration of the year. It's, yeah, it's, it's a and, celebration yeah, of the yeah. year. Kind of, yeah, That's yeah. why I look what at it. I go, year. you know, I had a great, I had a great year. You know, great podcast with a friend. You know, I finally I met it below my life. I have I've met some good people down here. So it's like it was a great year. I don't go, God, I'm so excited for 2023. I can't wait to go back to work in two days. You know, I'm not <laughs> doing that. And like I'm looking, I'm I'm just looking back on the year we had, you know. So well, I think, yeah, I mean, you do look back and you're grateful for the things you accomplished. Yeah. But there is some excitement if you if you have plans for the new year. If you don't have oh, any I'm plans, busy. like if you don't but if you don't have any plans. I could totally see how it's depressing because you're like, oh, oh shit, here we go, yeah. another year of shit. But if you're <laughs> yeah. like, if you have that momentum, like for me, I'm excited for this new year for the first time yeah. in a while. But um, am, yeah. yeah, dude, like I'm a completely different human being than a year ago. Like I've, I've just through self reflection, like I just cannot believe the person I was when I look back on podcasts and yeah. just prior things. I'm like, who is that fucking guy? Um, it's well, such yeah. a different per it's so weird and i think a lot of people will experience that because it's the age of the internet like no other mm -hmm. like you just yeah. have so much documentation of the person you've been and if you're a person who does self-reflect a lot and you change constantly and rapidly and you look back you're like oh fuck like that's cringy as hell and not even like 10 years ago like a year ago you're like jesus well it's funny, I? It's, it's funny you say that it's funny you say that because 
now could we should we change the saying from the looking at the man in the mirror to the man in the phone screen? Is that show we should change it to? Because instead of <laughs> looking at a mirror, we're not looking at a mirror. We're looking at through our own phone screen. God, I look like such an asshole a couple of weeks ago. You know, you're not looking in a mirror. Who owns a mirror anymore, bro? We all own phones. You yeah, know? the man in Instagram <laughs> selfies. Yeah, the man in Instagram. Well, no, uh, I agree. Like, I, I don't think I've too. changed as much. The man in yeah, Instagram. It does. Yeah. yeah, it does. Like, I will. Like, I, I can. I think you change a lot. I don't want to see. I don't think you. I think I want to say you've gotten more mature because you've already. You already were. I just think mm. you've learned to be more businessy and that's not really a word but i feel like since you with the company you're trying to build and you gain more knowledge and i feel like for the last year if i had to put one word to you would be professional you learn to be more professional yeah. and work and then like i said start up a business a podcast that's why i think of 2022 with you i think if you were more for your professional you grew your knowledge in terms of trying to start a business understanding how to run it and how to make it make it work at the cogwheels turning you know so I think that's what I would say about you from 2022. Yeah, 2022 for me was a real grind of education, uh, experience, and just being not a workaholic. Not one year did you say that in school. Not one year. I was just about school. to say, <laughs> yeah, nothing. Like I was prepared zero, especially now that I started a business. I was asking my uncle for help, and he was like talking in business terms, like, "Oh, I don't know what that means." He's like, "What are you talking about? You got a business degree?" I'm like. Oh, they showed up an hour late and said, <laughs> I don't want to be here. You don't want to be here. Yeah. Let's get this over with. Yeah. That's what Again. I learned at Portland State. Yeah. So speak real slow because I don't know jack shit. So I, <laughs> well, like, well, think about it's this. unbelievable. Think about this. You, I, you can ask my dad this or whatever. The education system from then when they were like even your uncle. Yeah, different. so different. Like, so different. It's, it went from yeah, put your hands on our desk. I'm gonna slap it with the ruler to hey, give me your phone, Jimmy. <laughs> I'm taking your phone away. It, yeah, like, it's they were more strict, radically. But they learned so much more, and that's that's the problem. You learned more when you were getting like we hated strict teachers, but like and I I never hated strict coaches because I realized the strict coaches are the ones that actually push you to be great. The lenient coaches that sit back and kind of go yeah, do whatever the fuck you want. It's like and you know why I bet people. I know you know I bet like, that is is because you wanted to be good at that sport, yeah. so you're like I need this. But when you're yeah. forced to go to school and the teacher is <laughs> just dragging on about nonsense and like you don't want to do it because yeah. you're forced to do it, it's not like an elective, yeah. you know. Then it's you you resist against it. But yeah. in sports, you're like I actually need this because you like, want to well, do and, it. But also, like the the class I learned the most in was health class. Because our teacher had like a yelling voice. So it was really hard not to kind of doze well, off. Everyone like, was a little scared. Like, everyone was yeah, a little scared. Like, Wait, what? Yeah. I mean, I did doze off once in this class, which is pretty, with how he talks is surprising. But when he talks, you're like, you put your ears perk up like, wait, what? Is he yeah. yelling or talking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah but no, you get it. Like, like we, we love leaning teachers, but it's like the leaning teachers didn't teach us shit because they were just no. lenient. They just didn't care. No, they didn't care. So I mean, but yeah, I mean. Yeah, I'm for, glad, for this I, year. I, I just I've noticed with you, you've matured. I think, uh, like, like you, you have been maturing. But I've also noticed you have a pattern of, like, sometimes you're a little slow to kind of progress. But you yeah. always, I've noticed, do make the right decision compared to other people. Yes. You know, yeah. and once you it's make that leap, then you really get it going. That's what I yeah. have noticed. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say. Well, thank you. First of all, I yeah. wouldn't say I'm like I said. I don't think I, I don't make the. I think I'm just a slower processor. Like, you know, you're the nice, you're the nice, like, Intel i9 or whatever they have. <laughs> I'm, like, the first Intel they came out with. I'm slow. <laughs> I'll take the time to boot up. But eventually, I'll get there. And I'll get, I'll make sure it's right. But it just won't be as fast as the newer Intel processor, you know? Uh -huh. So, I know. So, I, I kind of noticed that. And that's just, I think that's who I am. Like, I think at first, it's kind of like, it's like, like, I'm a, you are the Amtrak that runs on electricity. You're just, you're zooming on power. I'm an old school train. You get the coal moving. The, the wheels will start turning a little bit, then we'll gain some movement and we'll drive. You know? uh -huh. So I'm a little behind you, but I'll get there. The same destination's there, but I'm a little slow. I think we just have different paths and like what we need to overcome. Like I had to yeah. really be introspective. And I went from being a guy that was like, uh, I mean, over time I've gotten to be this person. I went from like just being why me, why being a cripple, the whole victim bullshit garbage. I don't blame you. I, I mean, if I'm <laughs> stuck in my room every day with what you had to deal with, I, I can, I've told you this, even to your face, I wouldn't have been able to go through the shit you did. 
Because like I said, I would have been like, why the fuck me? I would. I don't blame you because I'd have been like, why me? I would have. But sorry, go ahead. But I mean, I could see why I was like that. But you when you conquer, yeah, when, when you conquer everything and you survive, you know, dying all the time and being, you know, just so many medical complications that, yeah. you know, going to the emergency room, all the surgeries, blah, blah, blah. And just the everyday trials of being a handicapped person. Yeah. Um, you know, you come out of it and you connect the dots of like, I needed to go through all this to become the man I'm destined to be. Like, mm -hmm. I would say in 2022, what I learned was to follow my heart is to follow my destiny. And I learned mm -hmm. to actually listen to my heart, which is, and I cannot describe it to you because I don't think many people at our age have been able to do this. No. And I think yeah. I've, it's a genuine, like, gift from God, which is known as grace that uh, I've been able to achieve this at such a young age. And I am actually really, 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 I, I was I, in prayer, I was talking about this to God, I guess, the other night, about how I genuinely, I was tearing up a little bit too, because I'm so grateful for all the things I've had to go through. And I can't believe that I've reached that state of mind. It took me almost, I'll be 25 on February 8th, so I'm mm -hmm. still 24, but it took me, you know, almost 25 years to get to this point. And I'm just, I'm so happy that I reached it. And I actually can feel, I talked about this on my last chairman of the board episode podcast, which is more kind of serious. This is more comedy co podcast, but I'll mention it is like, I can genuinely like, now that I'm more spiritually aligned or however you want to yeah, say spiritual. it. Spiritual. You spiritual. Yeah. Man. I can, um, I almost feel like a field of love around me, which I never really felt before. I always felt you know, miserable and I was out of touch with whatever people call it, like higher self or God or whatever you want to say. And now I can feel that. And I'm just, I'm actually ecstatic to be alive. And I've never really, it's always been there deep, deep, deep. So I've kind of always felt it, but it's just blossomed now. And I can, I can fully feel, feel it. And I'm happy to be alive because there was a point where I wanted to be dead. Like it was close for me. And now oh, I'm just, yeah. I'm so grateful to be alive. So 2023 mm -hmm. for me is, it is exciting for the first time. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Like, I mean, I, I'm surprised you haven't gone to like an actual church and kind of like, no, I'm, I'm, not being, I'm not kidding here. I'm not surprised you haven't gone to like a church and kind of talked, like had like a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the, a father. Or, or I would love to interview kind of, a priest. That would be of, very interesting. Kind of tell him like what I felt the last year, the aura of love. And I bet you he would. Not you may say a couple of things you don't know yet, like spiritually, but he may say some things that could even make the aura bigger, or maybe open your knowledge of kind of what that means. Because I thought about that, because I've I've been emotional, like I lost somebody who committed suicide like a month mm. before the new year, and that kind of made me feel even more grateful. I mean, because I mean, it's also I mean grateful that I'm able to be able to mentally and emotionally fortify up there to not. Because I think, but I think part of that why I can never do this because I'm grateful. Like you talking about grace, I'm grateful to be able to live every day. Mm -hmm. And you know, people fear death, and I think I fear death because of how grateful I am to live. You know, uh -huh. I love being able to wake up every day, and I don't care if it's fucking dumping in thunderstorms. Like, I'm like, <laughs> oh man, the fresh air. You know, I'm getting soaked like it's a shower. You know, fucking Zeus is throwing lightning bolts on my ass. You know, uh -huh. it, feels, it feels good, <laughs> but you just it's the fresh air. You know what I'm saying? It's like being able to realize I, have, I get to live, man. Not everybody can, you know, is, you know, we, yeah. we only get one life. You, you never know when you're going to die. So it's like you should be grateful for what, like, the life you have, being able to kind of just be on earth. But obviously not every situation is the same. But also what went against you, the also thing is that in high school, I kind of thought about this the other day. In high school, in high school, like, I feel like when they say girls are more mature than guys, Mm -hmm. the high school era for guys is kind of like like their penis and their testosterone kind of <laughs> kicks in before the brain it's so like all high school years because all high school years are thinking about with your penis let's be honest like the whole high school like i'm thinking of my penis here and then so the true. brain comes in afterwards the brain comes in after high school so you're like yes. why did i think about this sooner well you know why because in i guess the 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 anatomy or you know in the i don't know how you would call it in the man and womanhood of life that's just how we're built the penis comes first then the brain comes for the man <laughs> And that's why there's like so, so many school shooters is because like guys are fucking going nuts and they can't get laid or they're like really depressed because they're, you know, everything's going crazy well, that, and think, they can't control their minds. They don't have a well, mind yeah. to like 
because yeah. then the testosterone builds up because then you're and then you get the because then when the testosterone the blood's flowing you're kind of blacking out you're kind of mm. blacking out mentally and you don't you kind of just like oh i'm going berserk so it's like <laughs> i mean has I'm there really ever been a woman or like girl school shooter no there hasn't they've all been men they've, <laughs> they've all been all young men, men. all been they've usually all been like men. straight white young men i do like that is I one thing know. woke people i guess kind of have right that is kind of factually, you know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I agree. I would because it's like, but you know, you know how I sit there, like I see another one, like, bro. You know what you're doing to us? <laughs> you know what you're doing to us, man. Soon, <laughs> sooner, sooner, like you know, like, the stereotypes. I'm about to walk into a. I'm about to take my kid to school and be like, "Do you have a gun on you, sir?" I'm like, "No, man. I swear to God." Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, so it's sad, but I agree, and it's like, and that's kind of like I think mentally, because I think girls in high school are kind of like I said. The brain's there first for them, mm -hmm. even though they're kind of like, oh my God, nails, shoes, clothes. Okay, they're kind of <laughs> like that. But the brain's there first. Uh -huh. And then guys, but like I said, guys are kind of like brainless monkeys fucking wandering around with like their penis in their hand waving around like it's a wand. Like, what do some I do guys stay guys? like that too. Some guys. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Because that's the next step, I think, for a man is to kind of like mature. That's the, I think that's the, that's the biggest step for a man. Like, you, you know this because you've seen me because I'm, I'm a little later than you are. And we know some people who haven't taken that step yet. <laughs> like, that's, I think that's the biggest hurdle yeah. in a man's life. The biggest hurdle in a man's life is from high school to college when he realizes, okay, brother, to get through life, you ain't thinking with your penis. You got to think about it with your head and then what you said with your heart. The head is going to get you to where, you, I mean, also your heart because that can help you decide where you want to work. But like your head is the right decisions, the, you know, everything that you need to make sure you're on the right path. The heart is to make sure that you find the right love and you fill it up with the right people around you so you feel loved. You don't feel alone. Well, what I would say is like when you're saying that, um, you know, why don't you go to a church and talk to a priest about all this stuff is because I found that actually the church is inside me. And the more I was self-reflecting. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. For those of you just listening, Ryan peeked in his shirt. Yeah, what if I just <laughs> peeked in my shirt Sorry, and I, I, see a, I see a Catholic <laughs> see, like, priest? <laughs> I see a Catholic priest showing me his cock. Just like, <laughs> or, he's sitting, or he's sitting there with like, or he's sitting there with like, like a fucking candle. Hello, Michael. Uh, hello, hello there. Yeah. Or hello, hello there. there. Obi, 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 Obi fucking Obi Wan in a priest, in a priest outfit. Hello uh -huh. there. Yeah, he's halfway there with a the robe. <laughs> a um, but yeah, I found like the church and everything I need about my spirituality is in myself, in myself, and yeah. I don't really need anyone else. But I'm sure that um, other I mean, people have come to their own conclusions. And I do have yeah. a lot of questions, and I do and have learned from other people and their experiences. So I would love to interview a priest sometime of, you know, several different religions. Even ones I would be like, that's nuts. It would, be, it would still be fun, you know. I would no, want to interview a Scientologist. That would be, like, what if I got to I interview would, Tom Cruise about Scientology? That would I be, would love to be there with you. I'd love to understand be that. Because it's like, because what we've known nowadays is, like, you get all the terrible shit about everything. Like, yeah, Scientology is probably not great. Yeah, they probably bar you from seeing your kids and everything. Mm. But there's, got, there's something about it that m interested people to begin with. And I'm, I bet you it's not stupid. Like, I bet you it's not like it's... Well, I heard, like, it's, I it's, heard that they hook you in with like, oh, we do a lot of charity work, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and as yeah, you work your way up the ladder, then it gets like, yeah. you got to do this. You got to do that. Oh, yeah. It's like a slow process of kind of destroying your life. And then you have to give yeah. like... I don't know if it was 75% or 90% or something nuts of your annual income to the church. It's a lot oh, of Oh, yeah, money. no, I'm good. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't mind doing a food drive for the local church, but I ain't doing that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, but I, I, I just ask because I feel like you would love to kind of to interview a priest. Like, not like necessarily, not saying you don't know anything about it, but maybe you'll expand your mind to something that maybe you didn't learn. Because let's be honest, our high school necessarily wasn't a Christian school. Mm -hmm. And I went to a Christian college. But it wasn't like the old days. All I had to do was just take one like Christian worldview class, and that was that was only like the introduction to Christianity. So it's not like they don't they don't learn much anymore. Even if you go to a religious school, they don't like oh yeah yeah here read the first page of the Bible and you're good. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. Read That's holy Bible. I do, okay, done. I probably should read more of the Bible. Like I want to get into that too, just because I'm curious. Like I don't even necessarily believe everything in the Bible is correct. As a spiritual no. person, like I'm sure people change things. Like. I'm sure there, I've heard there is wild things. I've seen wild things that are in there. And, yeah. you know, you don't have to necessarily believe everything. But it's just interesting know to when, know what yeah, is, first, it's all about. Yeah, because the first Bible wasn't, has been, was so long ago that it was written. 
it's kind of like that game where you kind of say like you're you close the ear so you read the words and when like, it gets changed what about telephone is that what you mean yeah telephone yeah, yes telephone. like telephone yeah, yes yeah. So like the first Bible could be really accurate about God, Jesus and everything. And the next Bible was like, oh yeah, Jesus fingered himself to make Adam and Eve. Like, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like they could do that and be like, oh, that's part of the Bible. See, we don't know, but it says in the Bible. So it's true. You know, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? Like, I hope it's in there. I hope that is in there. You could, you could do Uh, a chairman Bible. You can just do a chairman Bible. I could make my own religion, dude. Scientology was written by L. Ron Hubbard who is a science fiction author that is the most yeah. published author, author still in history. And uh, like he, he never had second drafts. He would just keep pu- publishing and publishing and publishing. Just nonsense, terrible sci-fi novels. And one of them just stuck. And he's like, oh, I can make some money off this. And I believe he denied it at first. He's like, no, this is not a religion. And they're like, well, we'll give you some money. He's like, it's a religion. That's it's, what I would do. Mental. I mean, like, people yeah. was like, yeah, I denied it, but I mean, like, bro, they put two billion. Out. I'll say it's a, I'll say it's a freaking sex position. They tell them it gave me two billion dollars. Mm. I mean, that's fine. But because I've, I, I will admit, I thought about, it. I thought about maybe going to a church and kind of like understanding a little bit about it. I, I'm kind yeah. of starting to get there more, more and more. I, I don't think I'll ever fully get there. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'd say I'm getting a little more spiritual, more yeah. kind of about the. I've world. noticed that with you. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. not. I wouldn't probably get as much as you are, because I'm kind of still in the halfy half of like, yeah, I believe it, but still, I'm kind of like living in my own hogwash reality. Well, I think I just have a little more because I've died. You know, like I've I, just more in the, the general population sorry. because I'm sorry, I haven't <laughs> tried to kill myself yet. I'm sorry, but I'm just saying you have. But I'm saying I haven't really tried to die yet. So, <laughs> and, well, exactly, that's what I'm saying. So I think I'm just I've fast forwarded you know, compared to other yeah. people just because of what I've gone through. But I think you're on track, you know, like you're, yeah. you're following your heart a lot and you've improved. You know what's funny is I'm surprised you haven't made a bit about that yet about you, like you dying. Like, you know, when you start saying, oh, I have the stories you know, written down. I'm people, waiting to, yeah, you know, people have always time. wondered since I've died, what dying's actually like, you want to know what the fuck it is? Look into that light and you'll tell, and you can see exactly what it looks like. Well, dude, when you you're know? one time I died, as you know, you love this part. When uh, my heart was 300 beats per minute and they had to stop it and then yeah, revive it's, me it's after. Yeah, it my mind every time to think that they can just stop and go, but, one, but dude, two, when okay, you, back again. When you go from 300 beats per minute to fucking zero, it feels like you're being hit by a fucking train. You go, <laughs> it's just fucking nuts. You literally, I made that noise. What gets me is that. Yeah, what gets me is that when you do that part. You love the noise. <laughs> it's fucking yeah, I can harsh. imagine it. I can just see you on the bed just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just, intense. Like, I, yeah, I, I, I feel like I miss like a breath. Like, a, not like a, like, I feel like there's like a rhythm of breathing, but I feel like I miss a breath. Like once I'm like, <gasps> I'm like, I feel like I'm dying. <laughs> mm-hmm. So but imagine yeah, no, your heart just, at 300 beats per minute. I and then it goes to fucking nothing. And yeah, it just stops. It just goes yeah. poof. No, you know, it's yeah, like, it, you know in the movie I Am Legend when the zombies are screaming on the table? Oh, and they're, yeah. like, and they're like dying? It's like, <laughs> oh, this is the noise I fucking make. Yeah. Was, and they're like, is he okay? Oh, he's just making the noise. <laughs> every, the noise every person makes when we do this. Yeah, the doctor is like, Does he make this, has he made this noise before? He's like, oh, every time he dies, he makes this noise. It's okay. My mom's like, oh, yeah, it's okay. He always makes this noise. Well, I'm just trying to picture even the doctors. Like, as we're filming this, the uh, I scared Bulls. one of them. I scared oh, an ER doctor. I swear okay. to God. I, I, like, I'd oh. be scared too. He's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because as we're filming this, the Buffalo Bills, Bengals games going on. And we and I, I don't watch sports, but we saw, or I saw a player collapse and had to get CPR. And it was not good. So it's like, I'm, I'm just trying to picture like, oh, a player class in the field, we're hauling ass carrying a CPR and the AED with us. And we're trying to get him going. I'm going to see the doctor with you. Stop him. Okay. One, <laughs> two, three, three and a half. Order four. Okay, defibrillators. Okay, we charge them up. Like they're yeah. taking their time. We're sweet as time with yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's why I can just picture. That's basically what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the times yeah. they use the. Uh, they can either do it with defibs or they can use drugs to kill you and like revive you and stuff. So I, I did the drugs most of the time instead of the. Here, uh, take defibs. this. 
this, this is Annie. This is to kill you. And then well, here, no, this it's through it's through your IV. It's through your IV. It's not like, hey, pop this pill and we'll kill you. No, it's not. Like it'd be that. funny. They have you take fentanyl to kill you, and then they bring you back with something. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just, hey, <laughs> take this. What's this? Oh, fentanyl. Oh, so I'm definitely dying. Just a smidgen of fentanyl. Just That's a sin, just a slight overdose. A slight overdose. I guess yeah. it will label your death COVID related. <laughs> I'm sure if I died, they would have labeled it as a COVID fucking death. At that 20% point. oxygen at birth. Ah, that's COVID related. Yeah. But, but through the New Year's, I mean, I want to know, ask you, do you have any New Year's resolutions? Uh, yeah, my New Year's resolutions are to, you know, of course, work on my business and develop that and also live more independently as the well Empire. as um, I want to start journaling every day. Um, Ooh, diary. Cute. Sure. Yeah, and I want to <laughs> diary of a crippled comedian. Diary of a crippled. You could do a spin up <laughs> like a play spin up. Diary of diary of a crippled kid. Diary of a crippled comedian. That works. That they're all. It's just all crippled jokes. Um, you know, I could see you. I could see you producing your own like Malcolm in the Middle show, like with Chris Rock. He's like, yeah, mm-hmm. I'll do like this. I can see you doing something like that. But sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, you no. know, I've actually always wanted to do that about like my yeah. childhood and all that shit. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I could see you doing that. Like everybody hates Chris. Um, yeah, everybody hates what Chris. What was the other thing? Uh, what was, oh, and to uh, read more, like actually read full books, which I did already start. I read the nice. war. I read the War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, and it was a very good book. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I heard so, yeah. that's a very like uh not the art of war. Of... Not the art of war. Oh, the... art of war. Okay. I've read that too though. But uh the war of art is about um just in it, you're probably gonna make fun of it, but it's about like uh just becoming an artist of any profession, of any art no. and what it takes to become an artist. You know, I'm not, or, I'm, like, I'm, I'm not it can be in writing, painting, anything, yeah. but a lot of it was about being an author. Because I do mm-hmm. that's the other thing. I may I don't know if I'll do it this year, but I may also write a novel. As long as it's not a children's book, I think we're fine. No, it's not going to be a children. It'll be like okay, good, good. I'm like I'm. I'm not saying you do some like like CRT <laughs> shit, but I'd definitely be worried about what kids are going to be reading from your books. <laughs> like, Daddy, what is he doing with his hand to that person? <laughs> no, I don't think I can. Oh, close, it. close. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd have to do that when I'm like. <laughs> when you, know, you made it, <laughs> when you, yeah, when you made just it. yeah, no, but it'll be like um, you know how I write my essays and I filmed yeah. and recorded some of them. But, so it'll be like a collection of essays about different ideas I've had in my life about different subjects and wisdom I've gained and things like that. Very nice, yeah, yeah that'd be good. Yeah, that could be a, that could be a New York Times bestselling author. I think I could do it. Yeah, you could. I mean, let's be honest. They've given it to Don Lemon, so I mean, they can give it. Anybody. Did he really get it? He's fucking. I, I, I'm, I'm yeah, trying to be less right. negative, but he isn't the wisest man. Sorry, um, I, I New Year. I shouldn't. I gotta be like, sh- sorry. I didn't mean to. <laughs> it's New Year. I'll lay it off. I'll lay it off a little bit. Yeah, Don no, Lemon good. has Those to go through good. a spiritual awakening. I think he needs a <laughs> couple of lessons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no, that's good. There's some good resolutions for you. But I guess I mean I'm you. I am surprised because you didn't read books earlier because you always seemed like that person. But obviously, you've been like I said, you've had other things doing. Like I said the video game phase, your Twitch. Now yeah, I was doing that, busy. but I was like, I always thought I was retarded because whenever I tried to read in a physical book, my eyes, I didn't know this was, I had so many eye problems where I was, I was legally blind. But yeah. when I tried to read, I didn't know I had um, this thing called, you know, I have the ghosting images thing that's new oh, yeah. where I see through yeah. everything, but I yeah. have something called double vision where your eyes like cross over each other mm-hmm. and it makes you yeah. really dizzy. They're uneven. And it makes you pass out when you read. And I didn't know I had that. So every yeah. time I try to read a book for like high school and stuff, I would pass out. Too. And I just thought, I can't read. I'm fucking stupid. But it was yeah, just like my a, eyes. A, yeah, can you imagine? And our, I won't say his name, but we have a common, like we share a common favorite English teacher during high school. Yeah, yeah. Like, can you imagine what he would have done? Michael. <laughs> when you just were in a book and your head's just in the book. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think he woke me up before. Of course he did. He has it once, yeah. but he's been, but he was very polite about it. Yeah. But no, like I, I said, I like I'm it. surprised. But I so, can yeah. have been this. I have ADD. I just I, I read like five pages. I need the chapters to be really short. It's like I don't choose not to read, but it's just it's so hard with me and with my ADD to kind of just sit there and read words on a page and kind of just Kind of, you know, like if I, I, I can maybe read one chapter a day. That's probably so I would recommend audiobooks. Could you do audiobooks? Oh, I, can, I, I thought about while doing you're working talk. out. 
Well, that are just doing it before I sleep. Like calm, like how calm they mm-hmm. they, they read you stories for. I thought about doing calm bef- like many times. I may do it. Like try to do it this year. So yeah. maybe yeah. I I, thought, I, I, I may do. Audiobooks, and before yeah. you go to sleep, that's really nice too because it gets in your subconscious and you're going to be thinking mm-hmm. about it overnight and you'll really yeah. absorb the material. So mm-hmm. whatever you try and yeah, read, not, it's yeah. probably a good thing to do before you go to sleep. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. During one of those ads, Tom Hiddleston was whispering, like doing some ASMR, reading a story for one of those ads. And I was like, actually, you know what? Tom Hiddleston, I'll take some of your ASMR. It's like, yeah, really? I'll take you. It's, honestly, it sounded really soothing. What was I'm he like, doing? Tom Hiddleston? He was, reading, he was reading about a book. Like he was reading a book. I can't, about a novel for someone to like, act like they're falling asleep too in the commercial. And I'm like, this is really soothing, Tom. I might have to read this. <laughs> and I'm like, shit, I will. Have Loki read you a bedtime story. <laughs> Hello, brother. <laughs> I'll read you the story of Thor. Yeah, that would be good. That'd be funny. Read, read one of the Thor plays from the MCU. Oh, shit. Yeah. He would be like, my bastard brother. My bastard brother. Yeah. <laughs> but no, this is some good New Year's resolutions. I, I'm, I'm, uh, so what else, yeah, what else do you have? For, well, for me, um, to be, would be eating healthier. I'm, mm. I, I'm trying to get into the workout, like the workout phase. Like that's not a resolution. Cause I, tr- I started trying to do that last year. So I'm not, it's not really a resolution cause I'm continuing it. But this year I really want to start watching what I eat. My poor. Had you been consistent with your workouts in 2022? They could be more consistent. So that could be, I guess that okay. could be rest- be more consistent with them. But like my number one thing right now is eating habits. Because that affects, all, like, I don't think people understand actually how much food affects literally all aspects of your life. Mm-hmm. And if I aspects all, I mean, brother, the sex you have, and if you eat the way I have, it ain't going, trust me, you ain't going to, it's not going to be like that anymore. What is this new so, thing you picked up? You keep saying brother. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It just, Come on, it just brother. comes out. Come on, brother. <laughs> but like I said, you know, this, like, you know, the food affects like your, like your sex drive, the testosterone. You know, so how like how your how healthy like your lungs, your heart is, like, the vitamins you're missing, like, just well, just how you feel too. Like if you eat yeah, shit, yeah. you just have no energy, and you're like, ugh, what did I? You feel yeah. sick. Like I don't even. Yeah. I, I fucking don't. Are you like this? Because my sister's like this now as well. Just like eating sugar, just Some foods, right? like is disgusting to me. Like, I I don't like today. I had a uh, chocolate croissant from Starbucks. I was like, I don't oh, even like yeah. this anymore. This is gross. I just don't oh. like sweets. It's so weird. I don't like sweets anymore. For me, if it's a if it's the same food that I've had, like not every day, but if like regularly, I would. But like I had a like a piece of like I had like Tatum made pie. It's been like I had a pie in forever. And I had a pie. I'm like, God, this feels really good. Like mm-hmm. I, it's stuff that I crave. Where I think maybe it's kind of like doesn't make me feel that way. But I definitely agree with the regular foods. And like I like I've noticed like that's why when I'm in resolution, it's kind of like, dude, it's like cause we don't be grateful to live, you know. To live every day and breathe, this. but motherfucker, the key way I keep being, I can be able to live, be grateful if I don't live past thirty. So uh, you know what I'm saying? I can be, I can be grateful until I did. So I, it's something I need to change, and I know it's going to take me some time because there's going to be something that like, I'm going to have to like knock out. But I said as long as I don't have to give up meat, oh, chilling chicken. Steak, well, no, of course, yeah, you don't give up meat. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I tell people. Like, oh, you should go on a diet. I'm like, shit. I don't care what fucking diet is as long as it's chicken, steak, and beef. I don't care. Actually, that's I want to try. Um, never cut out. Have you heard of Butcher Box, that company? I've heard of it, but never seen anybody. Have. I want to see if we can get them as a sponsor it. because um, they just send you just these big things of meat, like big boxes, and you can oh, cook yeah. it over like several weeks. And oh, I would, they can. I would try to do Hello it's Fresh. so good. My sister yeah. uh, made a whole thing of like a teriyaki salmon the other night that we had for dinner. It was really good. And I had no bones in it. I've never had salmon with no, like, I hate the fucking annoying bones and it gets in your throat and annoying. Oh, yeah. This that, salmon that, had no yeah. bones. It was hmm. so fucking delicious. And dude, you know me, like, I want to fucking get a bunch of steaks and ribs. Oh, I know and you. Yeah, just you, my you favorite want a bottle, shit. You want a bottle of bourbon, really yes. to make an old fashioned. And Bianca just and her boyfriend for Christmas steak. got me a big thing of whiskey, dude. I've there got my you desk go. over there. I've been fucking sipping that shit. <laughs> So you good, know, they, they wouldn't do that with me because they know it'd be gone in a week. Yeah. So <laughs> have, you, have you tried red breast? Whiskey? Uh, no, no, the, I the recommend recent, it. It's most, really smooth. The most recent one I had was wild turkey and I actually liked it. I don't know if I've had wild turkey. I've yet to have Buffalo trace. Cause after you said how it affected your heart a little bit, I kind of was like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I don't <laughs> no, know. I think it was just me being, 
thinking that because my heart was fucked up. Because now I drink oh, it and okay. I'm fine. So okay. it was just my, it was just being try it. misconstruing maybe, yeah. being like. Maybe that one time. Maybe yeah, you just drank yeah, it at the same time. Maybe you weren't feeling great. So it kind of just. The time. That's definitely what happened. Yeah. But yeah, I seen it. And I'm like, you know, that sounds good. But I do remember the last time Michael drank it. He wasn't feeling good. So <laughs> he did like, go to the hospital did. and died. Yeah, so he, mm. yeah, he, yeah. He, 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 his heart was bothering him. When that does, when that happens, it usually is a good sign that it's not good for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why I kind of steered away from, but no, wild turkey is pretty good. Uh, I've been thinking about oh, like having a bunch of whiskey bottles on my desk. And having a nice glass of it and sipping it every podcast. That'd be awesome. That'd be, I'd do yeah. I'd do that. Would you like, that with me? Oh, I would. Like okay. I already like our Tatum no, she can argue all like when we have a house together, there's gonna be a well, it went from a man cave to a den where we're gonna have a fucking bar. I'm gonna have a fucking keg. Multiple kegs. If we're talking about dream here, I'm gonna have multiple kegs, a bar where we can sit down, some LED lights, some chill a chill atmosphere with a lot of alcohol down there. So that's my, that's the, the well, I want to know is how you're going to afford that. Because last time I talked to you, I asked you, so Ryan, like, are you saving up some money? Like, what are you, what are you uh, planning mm. for this new year? You're like, well, I'm planning to go, uh, you know, I'm saving up money for my next trip to Disneyland. And I'm like, what? you're telling me you want to have your own place and house with your girlfriend and you're, well, you're saving up for Disneyland. <laughs> what, what kind of an <laughs> answer is that? <laughs> So, that's what it was yeah like, you, literally, just literally, went, yes, you just, you just went, went and you're like i built my own lightsaber and you're all excited it's like good you did it and you're now you're like i'm saving up for the next time instead of like no, a new house yeah no yeah i mean well that, that, that'll come next year but yeah no i, mean, I had to save my money for disneyland but it's funny you said that because i think the day after we talked about that i got a note like a fox news notification that said uh, of about, course 70 like, percent of families that go to disneyland or disney world end up going into bankruptcy i'm like i'm like first of all that's terrible planning do you not plan that like okay, disneyland's gonna cost this much maybe we should put this much away like people just go in i only got 200 dollars in my name or our family's name so we're just gonna say fuck it we'll buy 500 dollars worth of tickets like really <laughs> like great planning that is bro terrible but that's planning. how your planning was like you're like instead of like planning for a house I want to plan for Disneyland. I don't need to yet, though. That's the thing, though. They have a they already have a family. They have kids they have to support. Like I just have to pay rent right now, and and that's fine. Like they have to, like, yeah, like, but if you want to build a bar and a man cave, that, well, that costs... would come over years because because that that's a dream. That's like ten years. Like that's down the line. Oh, okay, ten right. years. So that's not happening right away. No, 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 no. Why? Well, I, I talked to Tatum. Already has the, the plans and the ideas about what the first house would be. So I don't get it on the first house. I would maybe get it in the second house. Okay. So, yeah. So, no, I, but I agree. Like, with for this, I'm going to send, I have to save a lot of money this year because I'm going to be busy. Like, you talk about like the New Year's with all these trips, literally all the way up until June, I'm, I'm already booked. Damn. I'm, I know. I, I, it's fucking crazy because I have at least two trips to Oregon up in there. I'm mm -hmm. going to Hawaii. I have a trip to Laughlin, which is kind of like a smaller Las Vegas. And then, and then I, yeah, so I'm just like, so I just have a bunch of vacations throughout. I have a year. bunch of it. Literally, I'm Chevy Chase from Lampoon's Vacations. Yes, I, I live a vacation vacation just splurge going on. So, but no, I, so I this year I really want to like I'm thinking about maybe ha like having my own like bank account, like maybe separating from my parents, like maturing. You know, like maybe like, you don't have your own a, bank account. No, I do, but I meant like being able to kind of like move away from their under their name to having my like own own account. Maybe having my own like wiring transaction, you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of like move away from so under having their no, name. you're saying like having no, no financial support, yes. no financial support, yeah, anymore. Okay. yeah, kind of yeah. just well, not all because my I love my parents, but and there's some things that I like if I say no, they'll help me with this, they still will. Like, that's parents, like, there's some things I know that they will, but I would mm -hmm. like kind of like to have some sort of like okay, little separation from, from the parents a little bit. And so, I kind of like to do that and maybe have. Like I thought, maybe getting like a Southwest credit, a Southwest credit card, my own credit card that I'd, I'd pay, uh -huh. something like that. Because Southwest credit card is probably the best, be the best credit card because I get miles. Tame will have to fly for five dollars every time. It's a good deal. Mm -hmm. So much more mature money and business money wise would be. I'd so just learning time. how to manage money. I'm like that this yes. year too. Yeah, especially with a business, just trying to learn what we talked about because we learned nothing in business school. What about you? Just, I, I was talking there for a little bit. What about you? Like comedy? Because like, obviously, I mean, you've done, you made a, really, even from like 
halfway through the year to the end of the year, you made big strides in comedy. Like, what is your, yeah. like, do you have any comedy New Year's resolutions besides oh, God, growing this I mean, empire, besides growing the empire, besides the podcast like, empire and all that? It would be just to get more stage time because I yeah. sign up as for every open mic that's available, I've signed up and I don't get picked to go on them at all. Um, that's sad. Like, and I don't want to trash them. Sucks. I'm not going to trash them because you have to go there and they are a good club and everything. But I'm surprised that there's not more opportunities. You would think that you would want comedy, like stand-up comedy, to grow. So I, I, w- I just can't. And plus, you'd make more money. Like, why, why don't have more instead of open mics? Maybe have like a not a begin a beginners, but like a like stand-up comedy hour or, or comedy day where you like you book an hour and like and you like they see your work, you book an hour like and like up and coming comedians. Like, screw the open mic we just choose randomly. How about there's some nights where, like, hey, you want to go an hour? We'll get, we'll book you that hour. Like a like, like a young yes. apprentice comedian yes. hour or something. Night. Hey, like, Night. Hey, we yeah. give, like, yeah, so instead of an open mic where everyone gets three minutes, which is nothing. And, and you don't even, um, like, they just choose randomly. Instead of you may not have them to go, you right, are for right. sure going. Yeah, and because for sure go they have time. a scout for helium, and they're like, all mm-hmm. right, this person's up and coming. They're good. They're good. Yes. They're good. They're obviously talented. Yeah. So we'll give you, like, you know, seven minutes. And we'll have yeah. like a whole hour show and everyone gets like seven, yeah. eight minutes or something. Yeah, they should do something like that, but there never is any opportunities. It's either like big headliners and then once a week for two hours, they have like 26 people who will get three minutes. And it's really competitive because there's not too many other clubs because a lot of them closed after yeah. COVID. And then I can't go to a lot of the other ones because they're not handicapped accessible. So yeah. I have very limited options. So I do the best I can with what's available to me. The best case scenario would be I get to fly to Texas, Ooh, which I heard from it. people is not handicapped accessible in Austin at all. I heard it's very inaccessible. Down um, here is- but if I can find a way, that's the comedy capital of the world currently. Yeah. And there's tons of opportunities and there must be some that are handicapped do you, accessible. So. Do, you think, do you think maybe, not saying with the the the, pe- the celebrities that choose the, the ones that already made it do you think maybe there's not many opportunities in portland because maybe portland in terms of the population in the city not on the, a lot of people are interested in being stand-up comedians so they don't offer that many opportunities do you think so? that that could be like that no could be comedy a here is uh, historically has been very popular like comedians yeah. used to love coming here but after 2020 and all the riots and stuff people didn't like coming here anymore well i just meant like, well, would, i just meant like People in the city are like up and like you. Like, maybe do you think maybe there's just not enough people inspiring to become comedians? Where are those opportunities? No, it is competitive. There are, okay, there is a good amount of people. That's part of the issue is like it's competitive. So okay. everyone's fighting for stage time. So then they should and have listen, a lot, not to shit on people, but because there's so many podcasts of comedians out there, everyone thinks they can be a comedian now because they're they see these yeah. comedians on podcasts and they don't really have the passion to follow through with it. And they're just taking up time from well, that's people that really just, want to do it. Yes. Um, which, mm-hmm. you know, I, I like to encourage people to try new things. But if you're someone who's taking it seriously, it takes away an opportunity from someone who yeah. has the drive to do it. That's all. Yeah. And I think that's what people need to understand about having your, your mature mind is that like nowadays people want to be like when we were in elementary school and you, the top three job choices that you had when you were younger have changed so much now because kids are like, wanting to be a Twitch streamer and a YouTube content creator instead of being stuff that's easier to achieve, like a doc, like even though a doctor takes a lot of time and it's expensive. You mean more practical, not easy, practical. Yeah, more practical. Sorry, more practical. Yeah. But in a way, it is easier because there's a clear a path. Doctor, yeah, there's a clear path. And mm. to become a doctor, you don't rely on grinding thousands of hours and to be seen by other people. You to become a doctor is on you and you alone because you have to study and you have to pr- test well. Like that's all on you. So it's easy. So it's more practical, also easier to achieve. The Twitch, you don't even as a Twitch streamer, you, like you, you know this, you have no control over how you grow and how you would be able to make like some sort of money, profit, like popular or anything. So I think kids, well, kids like want to like I don't want to say kids, hey, you may love playing video games, and that's fine, but also that that market's not is not strong. Like it's it's strong. I mean, strong, but it's so well it's oversaturated oversaturated that's it's oversaturated 
Yeah. And so it's I think very you know, hard that, to stand out, you know, yes, and I get agree. discovered on Twitch specifically because there's no algorithm on YouTube. Yeah. It's been, that's why I stopped Twitch. And I went to YouTube yeah. because there's the more of an algorithm and it's, they, there's possibilities at least. And but, as you know, in the past year, yeah. you know, I got 15 million views last year. Not yeah. a bad start for my first year. No, it isn't. Yeah, um, great. So obviously it's a lot better than Twitch. So. Must have, people need to listen to you because the, way, the, way, the way you just said was a great way to think about it. Like, I don't want to deter people from doing this, but you have to understand that it's going to be competitive and you're putting in thousands of hours to maybe something that you may not even get close to even achieving. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, and, and I agree. Like, I don't want to like, crush people's dreams, but <laughs> also you're looking at, but you're looking out for them. Like you're also trying to save them maybe from themselves. You know, like there is, there does need to be a lot of that. Joe Rogan's talked a lot about that, yeah. about how, you know, sometimes you just got to be real with people. It's like, dude, you just don't, you don't got it. You're yeah, not, and you're not and willing to go to that next level that other yeah. people are. You're willing to do comedy, which is hard in the first place, but you're keeping it safe and comfortable and you're not willing to break the other barriers like everyone else yeah. to differentiate yourself. And it's just, you're not going to have any pull really. Like there's yeah. not. You're yeah. just there in the saturated market. And it's just, the, just like with Twitch, there's so many people that just sit there, not entertain, they play games. And, you know, you, you might be dedicated. Viewers. You might do you it every it, day. Yeah. But guess what? You're going to play video games every day, anyways. You know, like you mm -hmm. like video games. And just because you broadcast yourself playing doesn't mean you deserve to make millions of dollars playing games. Yeah. Like you have, oh, to, yeah. you have to have something that, makes it entertaining for people or something you add value with, you know, but yeah, yeah, no, I agree. And I think that's, I think that's that, that logic or I, I ideology is kind of gone away from the last few years and the generation, because, you know, instead of trying to keep it real and thinking it, trying to say that from themselves, we are instead pushing them to kill them. Not, that sounds not okay. Never mind. Wait, what? We are pushing them to screw themselves over. I know. I almost said that the wrong way. Like, say, I almost, I worded that. I, I was going to say kill themselves and save them from themselves, but then that, that sounded wrong. So, you know, you're, you're not saving them. You're instead pushing them more and more from pra more practical and being able to save themselves. Like nowadays, they're more about their feelings. Like, oh, yeah, you can't catch a football, but yeah, you could be a wide receiver in the NFL. You can do it. And as your son's getting hit in the face, with the footballs, his hands are right here. You know what I'm saying? It's uh -huh. like, you gotta, we gotta be able to like, yeah, we can care for people, but nowadays we gotta keep it real. And we gotta well, when you cater to every feeling you have, especially, you know, when you're yeah. a young guy, we talked about your dick is controlling you in high school all the time. When you cater to every feeling and you can't control your emotions and have mm -hmm. no discipline over them, then yeah. like, if you feel like shooting up the school, you're going to shoot up the fucking school. Yeah, I agree. But if yeah. you have discipline over your emotions, and you're like, no, I need to fix myself. And then mm -hmm. once I fix myself, then things will be attracted to me in the exterior world. But no, most people now just, oh, I feel like doing this. So, and you go and do something terrible because you have no control yeah. over your mental state. Mm -hmm. And Sally, you know, I think Andrew Tate talks a little bit about that. And he got arrested recently. <laughs> I don't know what to believe about him, man. I don't know. I agree with a lot of the things he says. I disagree. With a lot of the thing he says, and I hope he's not a human trafficker. <laughs> but I also is scarier. I don't know what's I scarier. The fact no comment. He's, no, yeah, no. I feel no, like no, saying no comment I too, but I plead the fifth. <laughs> he's being accused of being a human trafficker. I don't know. But the other thing is he talks a lot about government corruption. And as he lays out, like you get three strikes. First strike, they cancel you, take away your career and dismantle your character and everything online. Second strike is they try to put you in jail. That doesn't work, then they fucking kill you. And that's happened in real life a lot to a lot of people that have stood up for the right yeah. things. So either he could be a piece of shit, or he could be an extremely good person trying to do the right thing. Or, or he could be something down the middle. Or he could, yeah, I mean, well, everyone's not pure and good. That's true. You know, I, so I was, I say, Aaron, he could I be... He has his flaws, obviously, as every human does, yeah. but he could be tr genuinely trying to do the just and right thing and getting yeah. screwed over like many yeah. people have in the yeah. past. Yeah, I always I say everybody's, everybody has a little asshole in them. I mean, that's just how it is. Everybody has, everybody has well, that. Well, you have I the mean, yin and yang, right? The dark yeah. and the light. And 
Yeah. You, that's what the things. contrast is you. That's what makes who you are. Yeah. I have a whole essay I wrote about that of how mm -hmm. earth is the contrast that we live in, you know, I love with the, the dark light in the dark. Yeah. yeah. But no, what you were saying earlier is that I think what really people need to understand that when we're not, when I remember being told this when I was younger about having a good support system, like, yeah, it's about people like you're being able to tell yourself and, you know, be able to discipline yourself and control what you do. But like, there's a, a, a guy who worked for ESPN Sports Center like eight, six years ago. He died of cancer later the year, the, the, that, that year. But when he won like a, a award for courage at the ESPYs or whatever, he said in the speech, it says, when you're able to fight, get up and fight. But when you're tired, lay down and let someone continue the fight for you. Like it doesn't hurt to have a good support system. So like, and what I'm saying, like there's a diff there should be a line of saying, yeah, you should be cheer on for your cheer, like see your person to want to reach their dreams. But you also need to like say, okay, calm down a little bit. Like you don't need to get angry and grab that gun. And walk out the front door, <laughs> breathe, <laughs> give me the gun, and go outside and have a breather. Like, Dude, literally, you know that has actually saved people from doing terrible things. Just like, taking that breath and, and the pause. Yes. I've heard stories of just someone stopped them and did an act of random kindness. And just because yeah. that happened, they didn't do something horrific. There's many yeah. stories like that. Just a, just a pause to rethink what's going on in your head. Just a new and act, random acts of kindness, just to realize someone was nice to me. You know, yeah. that's happened to me when someone does something nice to me and I was yeah. in a terrible mood. I'm like, oh my God, what was I thinking? What was I? Mm -hmm. It just changes yeah. everything about you. I want to mm -hmm. do so much, so many random acts of kindness. Well, it's I just, just, that's it's, something I really want to do this year too. Oh, yeah, I agree. Like, you should do that. I mean, that's your resolution, but that should be something you do every day. Oh, like, obviously, I there's something you, something you can't fucking do. I mean, but to people like me, Open a door for somebody. Say how, ask them how their day is. Wish them fucking happy fucking new year. Don't oh. say happy fucking new year to them, but just say happy new year. You know what I'm saying? I hope that 2023 exclude brings the fuck. you. Yeah, exclude, yeah, exclude the, the fuck. fuck. Exclude yeah. the fuck. But wish them a happy new year. Wish them that, they're new, that the new year is good to them. Like good karma. Just something doing that. Because if you, I, well, I'm starting to really figure out a common denominator out of all these school shootings is people, especially family members that say, we saw the signs, but we never fucking did anything. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the lack of a good support system around people. So it's like a mixture of you being strong within yourself and you knowing what's right and wrong. But when it's hard for you, because we all are emotional, we know how hard it is sometimes we're caught up in our emotions. But then it's there for someone like a mother or a father to kind of put a hand on your shoulder, a sister, even a friend, and go, breathe, calm down. Yeah. Take a breather and go. Well, not even say calm time. down. Just show, like just show love, and yeah. that will re make a person reevaluate mm. life in general. Like, yeah. I, what I, and sometimes I do agree with you that bystanders um, sometimes are more guilty than the person that does a horrific crime yeah. because they contributed heavily to the person getting into that mental state. Yeah, and you know the person that does it is responsible alone. But you I know agree. what I mean? You, it's you just see the warning signs. It's you to bring it up to them and go, "Hey, man." Are you okay? You you seemed a little mad last week or two. Like they should mm -hmm. at least been like, "Hey man, how you doing? Like you doing all right?" Like like I find out like I know like I, I've I mean I talked to a person like in a month or two. But if I see, they post on their Snapchat story saying, "Yeah, I'm gonna go fucking drink myself to you know to death," I'll be I'll mention like, "Hey man, you okay? Like what's going on?" And then if you mm -hmm. have a conversation with them, like as you would notice, I had this with one with one person that I knew that there was they weren't like gonna kill themselves, but they were really depressed. As you kind of talk them a little bit, you see even their messages kind of get like, oh, he went from like two word answers to like two sentences. And he's, uh -huh. he's, he's, he's throwing some LOLs in there, some ha ha's, some lighter tones. So it's like just being able to kind of just almost it's kind of like imagine this person's about to jump off a bridge. You're talking them down. You're kind of like, hey, man, there's people that love you. You know, it, it's, okay, you know. You it takes so little. Take it away. really does. Yes, it does. It really does. That's why people think it takes a lot, but you just saying, hey, man, I love you. And I, I just, just even the like, cliche, wow. the, the cliche little things, it does to, to people, yes. it does mean a lot. Just some, yeah. just any amount For of positive, reason. any amount of positive reinforcement. It, yeah. it helps so much. And by the way, because you're talking about quotes, I have one quote, quote that I had on okay. my phone. And then I, I came of, across, right. yeah, we'll end it after this. Yeah, no, it was good. by. Theodore Roosevelt. Of course it is. And uh, are you a fan of Theodore of this, Roosevelt? Uh, 
United States of America. No, it's an American president, Mr. You, I love America. So I'm surprised it's not, I'm not surprised it's a president of this great country. Great country of ours. Real yeah, quickly, while you're looking it. up, did you see there was Navy Seal, a Navy SEALs were on a podcast episode. I saw it in the Snapchat stories today. Uh, the, it was the two of the Navy SEALs who captured uh, Hussein. And they were talking about, like, what did you say? And, like, it's about that moment when you saw him in that dark fucking hole. I forgot that they found Sadan in, a, like, a, a six-foot deep hole just holding a pistol. I forgot uh -huh. about that. Yeah, when yeah, they yeah. talked about that. And they, he literally was saying, hey, yeah, I remember Saddam was like, yeah, I'm ready to talk to president, the president now to negotiate. And, the, and the, <laughs> one of the Navy SEAL goes, oh, no, nah, it ain't going to work that way anymore. And he goes, as we're walking out, I remember hearing saying, hey, pre the president sends his regards. <laughs> Damn. God, that's some badasses, man. Okay, so this, this is a quote. Courage is not having the strength to go on. It is going on when you don't have the strength. And that one really fucking hit deep with me. Just being relatable to my life. Because just with me, there's so many times in my life that physically, obviously, I don't have a lot of strength, but I know I've always stood up to do the right thing no matter what. Whether it was like in junior high and kids were fighting, I tried to break it up and I would get punched in the face. Or when other kids had the advantage over me and would, you know, try and beat the shit out of me, but I still never stayed down. Kind of like Captain America, like Steve Rogers with the yeah, shield. Yeah, like he's on the fucking he's like, I can do this all day. Lit like, up the trash can, yeah, the trash, trash can lid. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, you know, all the times I've, I've died and I could have given up or, you know, when I had, a, you know, very depressive, not well-suited thoughts going on in my brain for being handicapped and i chose to keep going no matter what and i don't know just seeing that it really made me uh reflect but, and a little emotional but that's mental and, though i think i think when people think of being strong they go they, i really think that people like when they say hey man you're strong they go you fucking know <laughs> it no it's like people need to understand that when you say you're strong also it's up in here man because a lot like a lot of like because you could argue like yeah man like this you know this gets the ladies but this, this helps you with life, man. This may get you ladies, but this won't help you in life. Like this won't allow you to maybe fucking do open heart surgery to someone who's on their deathbed. Like this don't, won't work. Well, you it's can have it. all the brawn in the world and you can't do yeah. shit with it without brains. That's, That's why I'm, the well, classic story of David, David versus Goliath, yeah. David won because he had yeah. the brains versus all the bronze of Goliath. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that quote just fucking hit hard, man. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 like there, one quote that stuck with me in basketball, my longtime coach and trainer would say, hard work is nothing, working hard is everything. Mm -hmm. And that stuck with me. And it just, and it just means you realize is that, like, especially when you play basketball, and I mean, as, as someone who like, has played sports, as you play more and more, you realize how much mental strength matters because you may physically tired, but it, you may feel physically tired and like you're weak, but if you're meant to go, man, I'm not weak. I can push through this last half quarter. Dude, just that then, 1%. Like, just, yeah, you just I, get going. Like, it's I the think mental. Kobe like, talked about that. Kobe yes. talked about, like, just that yes. little bit more that mm -hmm. separates a good athlete from the best in the world is yes. you're able to go that, that 10 extra seconds, whatever it takes, you know. Yes. Genuinely. Yeah, I agree. And when you say that, yeah. it makes you think of that commercial with Kanye, that really viral commercial where he goes, can you be a same <laughs> animal yeah. and a different beast? And he goes, what the fuck are you saying, Kobe Bryant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good. Dude, yeah, but no, I agree. another it's thing that... going on now, man. What's going on? <laughs> but with you know, but I agree though. It's we we'll have to talk about next podcast. Yeah, but I uh... agree. It's that little one at that. Even just a point one percent can make a mm -hmm. difference, and that's why if people like real quickly why Michael Jordan's the goat because Michael Jordan not only physically was better than you, he was mentally better than you. He was obsessed. He, would, he was obsessed. He mentally. If someone said to him that you're the best player ever, he would in his mind say, that person just told me I'm the worst player on the court. And he would go out and drop 50. It's in the, it's in the documentary on Netflix. They literally go, yeah, dude. Like, like literally, you could tell Michael Jordan that he walks on water. He would, he would think that you told him that he would drown in a kiddie pool. <laughs> like, and he would use that as motivation. And I'm like, dude, that's, like, that's literally a, 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 it's incredible. You think, that's a, for, you think that's a form of mental illness? that just happens to make you really successful, you know? Maybe, but one, Michael Jordan hasn't really shown any sort of, like, psychotic behavior towards people, and two, 
he is the greatest of all time and has six championship rings. So I can't really yeah. compl- like say that. It's a good, thing. like maybe there are good forms of mental illness. Like I agree. having yes. those delusions of yes. grandeur that are like, mm-hmm. necessary. Yeah. You know? Like Tom Brady, yeah. like Tom Brady has, you can say he's very egotistical and stuff like that. But what he does, but what, what he's egotistical led to eight fucking Super Bowl rings, man. Like he's the greatest mm-hmm. of all time. Like, yeah, not all mental illnesses will be bad, but some mental illnesses will lead you to fucking championship rings, baby. It's true, like shit. true, man. True. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, this was another great episode. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Happy 2023. I wish you all the best in the new year. I'm sure Mm -hmm. Ryan does too, right? Yep. All of you, happy new year. Hopefully the end of your year was as good as, well, imagine as good as ours. We are both in the end of the last couple of days with some friends and family on the high note. I hope you were too. And just tell tell someone, like I said, do a good deed, you know, after this episode, you know, even in the middle of this, tell someone you love them. Tell friends, genuinely. I remember, tell them you love them, or just at, or just ask how their day is. Even so, if you're just curious to see how they respond, I used to do this all the time. Someone oh, you don't yeah. normally say you love them, but you've all, you know you you had that feeling for them, but you don't yeah. say it out loud. Just try it and see what happens. Yeah. You know, see yeah, how like much said, they change and how much it makes their day. Yeah. And there'll be, I I can guarantee this when you're loving just in general to people, it all comes back to you genuinely. Yes. It mm-hmm. does. So like, I, I can't tell you enough. Like I, like I said real quick, I lost a friend not too long ago. And I told us to Michael, I heard from two people we have not even heard a lick of since high school. And them just messaged me probably saying, hey, man, I heard, I heard I saw your post about your friend. I'm so sorry. I hope you're doing OK. That made me feel better. Like I haven't seen them since fucking high school. Yeah. But them just reaching out and saying, you know, I we really weren't like group friend groups or really around each other in high school. I just wanted to say, I hope you're okay. And I'm sorry that made my day. So do yeah. that for somebody, because if you do it for somebody, when you need it, it'll come back to you. And it's amazing to see the kinds of people that it comes out of. Cause it's not always the people you think I've had yeah. the same thing with strangers. When I posted my first comedy set and I had people reach out who I, you know, barely really knew or talked to that much and were just, they had no reason to be kind to me, but they mm-hmm. just told me how much yeah. they enjoyed it and it made their day. And uh, yeah, and I still think about that all the time. And those little things genuinely keep me going because you know how much hate I get all the time. Just and usually they're yeah. full of grammatical errors and spelling errors and make no sense. But just being on <laughs> the internet in general, those, we love those kind of hate. Please, if you cannot <laughs> form a sentence, cannot spell, or not even know how, how to use a word, please keep keep putting hate because it just makes it funny. They are kind of entertaining just because they're so stupid. Well, I don't take it any personally because I'm like. You try to roast me, yet you're supposed to make me feel some type of way when you came and spelled the word shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're just it's make really me mad, but... shocking. Do I learn recently that one third of America can't read it, read at a basic reading level? Isn't that and that's sad that's because you got to think about like all the third world countries, like all the third world countries oh, are yeah. not even like a fraction of that. Like Africa, like you see all the people like in Africa, like I don't have school. That only is like a fraction to what that percent is. There might be people in Africa that are. I'm sure there are. Way oh no, I agree. I'm just saying later. that like third world countries, like not right, as, right. Like, as lucky as we are. But yeah, like and people are just still here, you know. Yeah, are still here are yeah. adding like a lot to that percentage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyways. But anyways. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. Them. Tell someone you love them. We I appreciate see. all your support and this past year and all future support in this coming year. Have yeah. a great 2023.